Live from Southern California, it's time for another episode of Cook Live with Chrissy and Dr. Christy. Turn on the oven, light up the stove, and get ready for another delicious recipe from our plant-based cancer-kicking kitchen. And without further ado, here are your hosts, Dr. Christy Funk and Chrissy Roth. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode seven of Cook Live with Chrissy and Dr. Christy. We're streaming live to you via Zoom, YouTube, and Instagram. Yes, I see you over there, IG. Um, but we're still having some issues with Facebook. So hopefully we'll stream to Facebook again soon. Now, don't be alarmed. Chrissy is here with me, but joining us via Zoom today. Hey everybody, I'm here. <laughs> here. We're just not together. <laughs> it's, 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 sad, it's sad, but we're having, we're having floods, floods and all kinds of crazy things, things in, LA, in LA, so we are. we are. It's dangerous to drive today. Um, so anyway, we are going to make two recipes, starting with, well, it's all about Thanksgiving. Eating plants and not birds. We'll teach you how to make a meatless meatloaf, a gorgeous centerpiece for any holiday or really just any day of the week. I mean, why wait for Thanksgiving? Um, and my kids are gonna have this tonight, so I hope they don't want it in two weeks. Um, and they will, they'll devour it tonight and again, because this dish delivers. For those of you who don't know, I'm Dr. Christy Funk, board certified breast cancer surgeon and your health warrior at all things pinklotus.com. And Chrissy, Hi everybody. Hi everybody, I'm Chrissy I'm Roth. Roth, I'm a physical, physical therapist, therapist. I'm, I'm a plant-based plant -based, uh, nutritionist, nutritionist and I also um, uh, like to cook, to cook a lot, lot. And, I've and I've been cooking plant-based plant meals for about nine years now, now and enjoy, enjoy it, it and love, and to, love share. to share. And we are so lucky that she shares with us month after month and she is responsible for all of the Thanksgiving sides that we'll be cooking today. I'm going to follow along with her and make two of the amazing four things she has to share. So one of the many things we do here at Pink Lotus is to show you live, up close and personal in really simple, practical ways how every single time you lift fork to mouth, food is delicious medicine. Listen, right there with you. <laughs> you know, it's true though that food, I look at the power in food and today I will wax on a little bit, do tiny deep dives into a few of the ingredients today just to show you how the phytochemicals, the nutrients within these plants are always fighting on your behalf. And all you have to do is cook them up, chew them, and swallow them down. So uh, since we encountered some issues during our last month's Zoom, we are going to redo our October giveaway and we'll get to that about 15 minutes into the show. And remember, you have to join us via Zoom to participate in the giveaway, and you can find out how to do that in the description below. And as always, before we get started, I have a question to ask with a Thanksgiving twist today. Number one, where is everyone from? And number two, in one word, tell me what you're thankful for this season. Let us know in the chat and in the comments. Don't be shy, everybody. Allison, Laura, <laughs> Judy. All right, Allison from Rhode Island. Thankful to be with family this Thanksgiving. Isn't that great after our COVID hiatus of being close to others? Or maybe there were other reasons for the distance. We're so glad you're getting back with fam, Allison. Janine from Pittsburgh, thankful for family. Laura from Bellevue, Washington. Oh, now it's going really fast. Um, um, Thankful, thankful for my, for my health, health. Uh, that, that is, is Zoom, Zoom user, user from Fontana, Fontana California. California. Yeah. <laughs> Shelby, Shelby Hyland from, from London, London Ontario. Ontario. Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. As long as it's 70% cacao or greater, we don't want any milk chocolate. And Sid from Down East Maine, thankful for health of all our family and friends. We missed Laura from Bellevue, Washington, thankful for friends and family. Awesome. Judy from Philadelphia suburbs, family and employment. Yes, need to make that money. From Houston, Texas, thankful for friends. And my husband is actually a Philly suburb guy. So, you know. <laughs> woo, 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 oh, there he is in the back. All right, Chrissy, let's get this episode started. Everybody, if you are cooking along with us, and I hope you are, remember that you can use our interactive recipe checklist 
in cook mode. It's right under the intro to each recipe above the word ingredients. Click that button. I'm kind of obsessed with it because I used to click, I used to um, do other people's recipes and they don't have that fancy cook mode and then the computer keeps turning off and then I'm like, ah. And then you can also strike through each um, ingredient as you put it in so that you don't forget some critical oregano. Uh, so that's pinklotus.com forward slash kitchen. Select the latest two recipes to get all the details for what we're preparing today. We do have a small tradition here at Cook Live. We always start with a drink, a mocktail, if you will. And today I'm going to start off with a yummy mango mule mocktail, which is literally our most viewed, most popular mocktail recipe in our kitchen. And um, so Christy is unfortunately not here today to do this with me, but I'm going to, this is so simple. We're just going to take my favorite part. <laughs> so we could all cheers <laughs> remotely. So we've got five slices of cucumber slash and then one half ounce of simple syrup. I'm just going to use this uh, organic agave in my half ounce little, what are these things called? What are these called? Things that have ounces and half ounces. And then, so cross that off. And the then it's not a measuring cup when it's a cocktail thing. Somebody tell me. What is, what's wrong what with me? My grandmother had, what did she used to call it? Guys, what is this thing? All right, I'm gonna muddle away. This is a, um, a workout. It really is. It takes a lot of, mm, a shot glass, <laughs> duh. Okay. It is a shot glass, but it's like not, yeah, it is. That's what it's called. Okay. So I'm muddling away. Um, and then after this, we're going to add 1.5 ounces of mango puree. And you'll notice one of our common themes throughout all of the recipes today is um, carotene, the carotenoids. Beta carotene uh, is found in everything orange. So we're going to have a lot of orange food today. And mango. Sugar. Yes, that's what my grandmother used to call it. Oh, a jigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. My grandma. That. So I've got 1.5 ounces of this. I'm just using the mango juice, but um, you could do, you know, there's a whole mango, just pure puree. You could get, make it really uh, time consuming and do your own mango, mash it up. Okay. Then it's one and a half ounces of fresh lime juice, which essentially is one and a half limes. So I just got a whole, I'm not going to really measure it. I'm just going to wing it. Okay. So I can't and, believe and how popular I, it is. Also, always put our mocktails in a fancy glass, and it makes a difference. If you put it in like a wine glass or a rocks glass on ice, it makes it feel way more special. So if you're not drinking or you're trying not to drink, and you put it in one of these glasses, it does make it feel a lot more special. I have to say. And so that's what I always do. Okay. So I'm gonna shake this with a little ice. Does everybody think of Tom Cruise when they shake a shaker? <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's that? Back from your bartending days. If I had any. Okay, so I'm going to pour all this into a glass that has ice. And then we're going to top with two ounces of ginger beer. So, a little, let's see, here, here's this, I think it's the back of the spoon that I have handy. Then you just stir it and I'll garnish with, guess what Chrissy gave me, you guys, for my birthday? An entire, like, spice rack that's so beautiful in a wooden crate, it's outside, and then separately so it didn't take over, a mint plant, so I'm going to garnish with it's mint a garden, for Chrissy. A it was a it garden. Was a, it was a garden. <laughs> Yes, yes. Rack. <laughs> yes, that's right. It wasn't a spice rack. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a garden. A beautiful wooden pot. Okay. <laughs> to my garden, to my friend Chrissy, to all of you, I'm thankful for plants. Here, here. Mm-mm. That is some goodness. All right. So, we kind of Chrissy and I decided that we would try to order things uh, so that they would be done in time to show you. So Christy, you want some, to pop something in the oven? 
No, I'm just going to pop a couple things in the oven. I kind of, I prepped, we got very ambitious with this. <laughs> We're like, well, that sounds good. And that sounds good. And that sounds good. So um, yeah, I, I had to prep, prep things ahead of time. You're not going to watch me cut up Brussels sprouts. Uh, so I have some Brussels sprouts right here. Beautiful. Um, I cut them in half. I cut, you cut the little stem off the bottom and then you cut them in half and then put them on a baking tray. And then I have, I love parsnips um, and, and this is like tis the season, right? So parsnips and carrots. And I'm going to put those in the oven right now because they're going to take a while. And I like to break, like, I don't put them all on the same tray for a reason because I, if you toss them all together and put them on the same tray and they have different cooking times, you're then in your oven, like trying to pick out what's done, which is a real pain. So these are, these do share a tray. I don't know. I think that they might have around the same cooking time. If not, I'm going to pull them out. Um, so I'm going to put these in now. They are uh, gently sprayed with olive oil and then um, a little salt and you can jazz them up a little with like a seasoning salt. This is that 21 seasonings dilute from Trader Joe's. You can sprinkle some of that on there. Um, you don't have to because they taste really good in the end with the pomegranate seeds that we're going to sprinkle and the yummy um, balsamic drizzle, which will go on them at the end. So I'm going to throw these in the oven right now. And then I'm going to try to remember that I did that. <laughs> Set a timer. Uh, that's, I know that's what I want. But it's still something I'm guilty of not doing sometimes. And then I'm upstairs and I'm like, what's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, ah. So that's really sad. Um, okay. So I am also going to throw, I'm going to put on my butternut squash soup. So before I do that, I, I'm, I'm going, going, going to, okay, okay. I'm going, I'm going to, to, I already cooked, cooked my cauliflower, cauliflower and, broth. and broth. So here it is. And, and, and I, also I also cooked my potatoes, potatoes and, broth, and broth. So they look a little ugly okay. because. Wait, they but this cooked. is for the Kali mash. Are we doing Kali mash right now? Oh, sorry. Oh, you're oh, going to cook along with me? me? Yeah, I got it. I got it ready. Okay. Okay. Did you, um, yes. Would you, we can wait. Do you want to put yours in? Because I know yours takes a lot, a while to cook. The meatloaf. Yeah, yeah, do the meatless meatloaf, and then we'll do the. Then yeah, we'll do go, the ahead, go ahead. Okay, so with the meatless meatloaf, I already pre-sautéed this. If we go to the interactive recipe and put up the picture of my right before I put the oven on, I had in here a quarter cup of veggie broth, a small diced onion. I used a yellow one, a cup of mushrooms, um, and oh, so when you see the picture, yeah, see it how tiny the mushrooms are, you might be like, why is her dicing like so tiny? It's because, two words, Justin Funk. If he sees mushrooms, there will be no meatloaf in his mouth tonight. So he'll never know, um, unless he's listening in the other room. And I have a one medium diced carrot, two diced celery stalks, a half a cup of diced red pepper, three cloves of minced garlic, which equals a tablespoon if you're using pre-minced, and then a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of ground pepper. And now, here is the finished product, all sauteed and ready to drop into two cans of chickpeas, which I probably could have pre-mashed, but I wanted to show you the right amount of mashing, because this is kind of critical. You definitely don't want it mushy. You can have little pieces, but you don't want any of the whole chickpeas in there. So this is my meat, basically, go garbanzos. In other words, I've tried, oh, so many lentil meatloaf, uh, lentil meatloaf. I've tried like four different ones. They're generally mushy. I do something wrong or I don't know. Lentils don't work as well for me as chickpeas. And the other very meaty texture, I love the flavor uh, you get out of adding walnuts to meatloaf, but it turns out it closes Ethan's throat up. So I learned that one Thanksgiving and haven't used walnuts since. Oops, I just lost my ears. I'll go get that. So if anybody's talking to me, I can't hear you. Um, okay, so I'm almost done mashing, and when I am, I'm going to add in my saute mixture and all of the other ingredients, which includes breadcrumbs. I toasted my breadcrumbs. Uh, I toasted just Dave's Killer Bread, organic killer bread. Uh, generally, one and a half pieces of toast will make a half a cup of cr breadcrumbs. And then I have another half a cup at the ready in case it seems too moist to me. Um, and then I also have a half a cup of pulsed organic old-fashioned oats. So if I haven't waxed on about oats before, I think we did, we talked about the glyphosate content in oats and how 
Cheerios or the highest glyphosate of anything. Um, but oats are so healthy, but not if you decide to eat them in that one minute instant cooked way. They spike your sugar, which spikes your insulin, which spikes all sorts of inflammation and diseases associated with inflammation. So old fashioned oats and steel cut are the only two types I want you guys eating. So I'm ready to add my saute into my chickpea mash. And then we'll strike through each of the ingredients because I probably am not going to forget because they're all lined up and pre-measured right there. But normally, I, I definitely have to follow the recipe. I forget something all the time. All right, so we're going to do a half a cup of breadcrumbs, half a cup of rolled oats. We've got the two cans of chickpeas that I just mashed and a quarter cup of celery. So this is my, these are my oats. So they're pulsed to make kind of granules. You definitely don't want to make it into flour. We want a little bit of thickness to it. So this is a full cup of breadcrumbs, so I'm going to use just half of it. Put that in there. My quarter cup of fresh chopped up parsley. Voila. And then three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, followed by two tablespoons of soy sauce. Nutritional yeast. One, two, three. Then we've got two of soy. This is tamari, only because the soy I had in the fridge is in like for a family of 400 size. <laughs> we use a lot of soy sauce. And I thought that will be challenging to pour into this tiny little tablespoon. We'll stick Should with we tamari. Should we talk about what nutritional yeast is? Yeah. Even then, look at that drip down side. Okay, two tablespoons of vegan Worcestershire sauce. Um, so as you can see, the label here, this is organic. You can just, this one's from Simple Truth, you know, the Ralph's brand, and it says vegan, so it is. <laughs> but that's a surprise for some people, because obviously anchovies are in your typical um, Worcester sauce. Worcester? Uh, We've done this before, this haven't question? we? Tried to say that word, Chrissy. Ooh, this is coming out yeah. so slowly. Okay, so we're gonna do two about tablespoons about of this. And then a half, oh, this is like my little secret weapon. It's a half a teaspoon of liquid smoke. It just gives us this rich, smoky, yummy, mesquite kind of flavor. And you could also, if you don't have that handy, use smoked paprika. Same thing, a half a teaspoon. Then I'm gonna mix this all together with a big spoon and put it into a parchment lined, uh, baking loaf dish. Here's the half. I'm going to press it in nice and firm and put it in my oven, which I preheated to 375. So, here we go. I'm just going to mix. We'll see how pretty it is. And then you don't, then I'll toss it over to you, Chrissy, and you can start on the side as soon as everybody sees how pretty my mixture is. And then we decide whether it's too moist or if it's going to stick together once it's cooked. And it's definitely not too moist. It looks perfect. So there we have the deconstructed meatloaf, which is about to get constructed into a pretty pan. All right, so I'm going to just pack this in while we go to Chrissy, who's working on, well, don't do the potatoes, because I need to do those. You want to do your soup? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, okay. While Perfect. you were talking, uh, someone had a question about liquid um, um, aminos. A question about coconut aminos and if those are okay to use. Uh, and you know, the only thing about coconut aminos is they are sweeter, so they can taste different than if you're using tamari. So you just want to make sure that whatever you're adding them to is okay if it's a little sweeter, if that makes sense. Um, because it can change the taste. If there's not a lot in there, it's probably okay. Uh, I know a lot of people like to use them instead of soy sauce because they are gluten-free, like tamari. But tamari is more salty, and they, they're, like I said, there are there are subtle uh, profile uh, in the taste changes. So you have to kind of try them out in different things and make sure that they're not sweetening it up too much. That's what I've experienced. So, um, all right. So I'm gonna make the soup. I already, ahead of time, put together Well, you do that, Becca. To find the recipe, you go to pinklotus.com slash kitchen. 
And then just scroll down, you'll see it right there. It's, it's uh, the first two recipes you see will be the meatless meatloaf and then all of Chrissy's sides. Okay, okay so, so here, here are the butternut, butternut squashes. squashes. Butternut squash <laughs> that I already cut in half. So I cut them in half. You need a sharp knife. Uh, I cut them in half. I put them face down like this. I brushed them with a little olive oil. I put them face down and I roasted them for about 50 minutes at 400 degrees. Five oh minutes. It, they always turn out different. Um, you kind of can't over roast these when they're for this, when they're for soup. So uh, I, I kind of just let them ride for a while. But if you're trying to do something where you're roasting them and you're going to eat them like cubed or something like that, you don't. You want to pay more attention and not let them get overdone. But for this, we're fine. I'm actually going to use a, the, what I have left of the broth uh, from my. Uh, potatoes, potatoes and my cauliflower because I already cooked those in broth. I'm going to use what's left in the broth to broth saute, saute some onions. onions. So, so I'm, I'm going to throw those on right now. now. Uh, and These won't take too long. And I want to show you. We'll get those going. And I wanted to show you something kind of fun. Where did I put them? Those little. Uh, here they are. Okay. Okay. I, I took the seeds, seeds out of the butternut, butternut squash, squash and I roasted, I roasted them. them. I actually, I actually did, did them in my air fryer with just a tiny little spray of oil and um, some salt. salt. And they were and so, so crunchy, crunchy and, and kind of juicy and, and so, good. so good. And, and yes, yes, you can, can eat butternut squash seeds. They taste like little baby pumpkin seeds, but I think they taste a little better. So I just wanted to show you these because they're very cute and they're really good. So anyway, anyway, you can do that yeah, with your butternut yeah, squash, and then you don't waste, you don't waste a thing because you're using the seeds, too. My mm -hmm. mom would be so proud of you right now. Waste not, want not. I had to lick my plate clean when I was a kid, for reals. <laughs> there you go. So, so I scraped them out, I rinsed them, and then I kind of just let them dry in a colander. And then I and then I uh, roasted them. So that's how I did it. Okay. Okay. So, so I'm broth sauteing some onions, broth saute, tiny little broth on a pan, let it sizzle. I already had it sizzling. I put the onions in. I'm going to kind of pay attention to those. I'm going to do a quick version. Normally, I'd probably cook them for about five minutes, five or six minutes, till they get glassy and clear. That brings the flavor out of them. But in the interest of time, I'm probably not going to do them that long. And honestly, because they're in the soup and I already roasted the squash, they'll be fine. So what do I do with the squash now? I am going to scrape it out of these beautiful little skins that it's in. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put it right in the pot. This is I've made butternut squash for years and years. I do make it different. If I if I want to do a down and dirty fast one, I'll buy the already peeled and cut squash, butternut squash, and I can make it with that. It does not taste as good. It's not as flavorful as when you roast the squash first. This just brings out so much earthy flavor. So it's a little bit better if you have time. To roast the squash and anyway time is just it's in the oven like it literally takes two seconds you cut it in half and you put it on a pan and then you, and can, you, and can, you can you can you can roast, roast them and then, then cook them the next day, day too i mean over, I mean, over thanksgiving, thanksgiving we're making, we're making so, much so much stuff, stuff. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's nice, nice to be able to do things, things ahead of time, time. like today, today christy, christy and i got really really ambitious so we ended up doing a lot of stuff ahead of time prepping ahead of time you can do that and you want to do it on thanksgiving otherwise you're going to lose your mind on thanksgiving day trying to make all the stuff all at the same time so I can tell you a bit. So these are the carotenoids are in the butternut squash soup. We have carrots. We have my mango. Um, let's see. It's also in acorn squash and pumpkin. Anything you know, orange flavored. And the carotenoids have been shown to reduce cancer risk. Every cancer, but I usually focus on breasts um, by inhibiting um, cell growth and proliferation by inducing apoptosis, which is cancer cell suicide, where we basically realize, the cancer realizes rather, that it's lived its time and it, and it disables itself. And it reduces inflammation, which all leads to less free radical damage. But one thing I wanted to add, Chrissy, that you reminded me was with um, the making things ahead of time. And one of the advantages that I want to talk about is lowering your sugar level um, when it comes to eating white potatoes. So uh, would you, did I interrupt your, the rest of your butternut or was it ready? You're just putting it in the oven and then you're coming back to it? Yeah, but no, I was going to talk, gonna about, talk the about the potato thing, thing as, well, as well, but you talk about it because, because you're, absolutely you're absolutely right. right. And, and I did and make I did them make ahead of time, time and they have, they have fully, fully cooled, cooled off. off. 
so we can have a little little more fun eating them knowing knowing that 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 they've cooled off so it it, so it's true that not all vegetables are created equal i mean probably king of all kings is going to be the cruciferous kingdom and that's your your brussels sprouts which we're roasting but broccoli and broccoli broccoli sprouts um cauliflower arugula kale spinach bok choy swiss chard the sulforaphane and the, that whole family is so off the charts powerful inside your body to reduce inflammation, seek out and destroy cancer cells. Um, and we've talked about myrosinase and how cooking uh, destroys it. But when it comes to certain vegetables like potatoes, particularly the white potato, if you look at all potatoes against each other, it seems that the purple potato would be the healthiest. The white one though, rest easy, it's neutral. So it doesn't have any of the power of the sulforaphane in our broccoli, but it also doesn't cause diabetes and it's not negative. And when you compare it like to what meat does inside of you when you chew and swallow it, it's nowhere near that. So the one thing is that it has a higher uh, glycemic index, which means it will more rapidly absorb into your body as glucose when broken down, which then will elevate your insulin level. Except guess what? If you cook your potatoes, totally cool them down. The glycemic index uh, is cut in half and uh, it doesn't come back if you heat them again. So you just gotta cool it once and then boop, all that kind of sugar concern of a white potato is uh, no longer a concern. And your gut loves that that starch starch resistance. resistance. It feeds your gut microbiome. microbiome. And And, and so so you you accomplish accomplish that that by just cooling cooling your potatoes potatoes off, which is easy and you can prep them ahead of time that way. And potato potato salad is like one of my favorite favorite things. So I was really happy to hear that. Of course, they make a really healthy healthy potato salad. salad. It's not like what what you're probably probably thinking of when I say potato salad. salad. Another fun study um, to share with you has to do with uh, lentils are amazing. But I was saying how like I couldn't figure out a really good lentil meatloaf um, without the walnuts too and then Ethan in the throat thing. So chickpeas. Turns out there's this um, enzyme that cancer loves that's called uh, matrix metalloproteinases. And what they do is like give cancer the ability to like burrow through the wall of wherever, where, wherever it started. So through the wall of your colon, through the wall of your stomach, through the wall of the milk duct in your breast. And then it continues uh, to burrow its way into the lymphatic system or blood. And then woo, it's a free ride to, oh, let's get off on liver. And then boom, it burrows into the liver. So of course, Big Pharma was like, hey, let's create inhibitors to these matrix metalloproteinases, which you and I can just call MMPs. And they tried, and it worked so well in animals and was so toxic to humans. So we have no inhibitors. (gasps) But wait, maybe we do in food. And it turns out of all the foods that uh, stop the function of MMPs, it's in the legume family. So lentils, beans, peas, chickpeas, split peas, uh, soybeans, and then your typical beans, kidney, black bean, lima bean. And then they studied it. They studied the power. <laughs> That's hilarious. What is he throwing at you? Garlic. <laughs> <laughs> I not saw that. Flying garlic. Um, really, really, really and he so they studied the power of different extracts of beans. So if you put MMP in a plate, it burrows through cancer, it burrows through walls and does its enzyme activity at 100% because it's undeterred. Then if you throw a little bit of like pea protein in it from like a typical pea soup, it doesn't really, it slows down a little, but it doesn't really slow down. Then if you use your common beans like kidney or black or fava, um, it slows down by 50%, but the magical two were chickpeas and, oh, soybeans. Of course, you know I'm in love with soy. Cut the MMP activity by 90%. So cool. All right, so where, Chrissy, are you ready to move to something else or should? It? Well, no, oh, no. I'm, I'm finishing, finishing the soup. The soup. The, the, I just I tasted the um, um, roasted, roasted veggies. Done. They're, finished. They're finished. All of them All finished at the same time. time. So, so I pulled pull those out. out. I will show I'll you show them in a second. second. And, and I'm, I'm putting, putting into, into my soup, soup now. now. So I have the onions, onions which were raw sauteed. I scraped all of the skin of this butternut squash clean. I put that in my pot. 
I'm putting my garlic in. And I'm putting my two table, uh, two teaspoons of French thyme. Always a joke between me. <laughs> Chrissy, because I got French thyme in my herb garden from Chrissy. <laughs> Right. Has now to be French. French thyme. I, I like French thyme better. I don't know what to tell you. I it's I just like the taste of it. In fact, if I buy something that says thyme, you know, it's, it's I don't, I like, don't it. like it. I only I like, like the French, French thyme. thyme. I don't know, I don't know why. why. Uh, you know what? Confessions. You just enlightened me because I don't like thyme that much either. And I realized I started to put like pinches into recipes that called for a teaspoon because I just didn't like it. And so I bet. Over yeah. I bet I'm gonna love the French thyme too. I. I know. Didn't know I think it existed you will. Until, like, okay, so I ago. put the thyme in. I put um, where else? What else was I? Oh, a half a teaspoon. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of cinnamon because cinnamon is pretty strong. You could probably end up more, more, and maybe you will. But, but you, you can, can always, always add, add, the add the cinnamon at the end. It doesn't need to cook in there forever to make it good. So I'm gonna just use a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and and then I'm also going to add salt. And, and and that's it. And then I'm gonna add broth. And then I'm just gonna put the top on and I'm gonna let it cook. So hey, Chris, that just... looks like a Trader Joe's French time. Is that where you got it from? It is. Yeah, yeah. Laura yes, O'Hara, yes. Trader to TJ's. We love TJ's. But they have it for us too. I mean, they have it like in the market. It'll just say French time. So this is what we're dealing with now. Okay, so we have everything ready to go. I put the whole, I just put the whole garlic cloves in there because we're gonna blend it. And I like the way it tastes better and I can handle whole garlic better than crushed garlic for some reason. So uh, I'm gonna put my four cups of broth. And I actually have broth left from when I did my potatoes and my cauliflower. So I'm not gonna let that go to waste. I'm gonna put that in there. And I have about a half a cup left. So that's going in, and then the rest of this is going in. And butternut squash come in many shapes and sizes. <laughs> so the one thing I would caution is that if you end up with some tiny butternut squash, you're not gonna need four cups of liquid. Some of it cooks off, but I am gonna cover that, so not a lot is gonna cook off. So if you end up with smaller butternut squash, you don't need to put that much liquid. You just kind of want it covered and then and then like maybe an inch over what you scraped out because you're gonna blend it and you can always add more when you blend. All right, so that's on Did you put your milk in there? Did I miss the milk? Um, not yet, that goes in at the end. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, that goes in at the end. So, uh, all right, so are you ready for the potatoes? Should we do the potatoes? Let's, should we do the potatoes? Should we do the giveaway? Hmm. Hmm. I think you decide. I think we'll just do a little giveaway so everybody can start to put their answers in. Uh, this month's giveaway is last month's giveaway because <laughs> we didn't get to do it. And what we're giving away is, okay, first of all, it, IG, um, you have to be on Zoom to participate in the giveaway. And for those of you on Zoom, you're in for a treat. Uh, so be sure to have your chat window open. I'm glad, Michelle, that you made it. We were waiting for you. Not really, but I'm glad you're here now. Um, and so have your chat window open because you're going to need it to participate. Today, we're giving away some of my, truly some of my most favorite products. And they're all part of my antioxidant smoothie, which you can look up if you don't know about it. Dr. Funk smoothie. That's all you need to put in Google. We call it the smoothie power bundle. And it involves three different products. The first is aloe tonic. This is especially unique because it is the entire aloe leaf cold processed, not using any heat, so you don't use, lose any of the phytonutrients that are so anti-inflammatory in aloe tonic. And for my estrogen positive cancer patients out there, the acemanin is a mucopolysaccharide in here that degrades estrogen receptors off of cancers. And then they're like, wait, I can't get my food, can't get my estrogen because the receptor's gone. But it has um, incredible anti-inflammatory properties such that it can really help you, especially now during cold and flu season. I always have two um, ounces every single day. The other uh, in the smoothie bundle is Amla Boss. So I love one of these studies that, um, that I found off of nutritionfacts.org, Dr. Gregor, many years ago. He pub published this one uh, video about this study that looked like at 3,139 3, foods, everything from Coca-Cola to coconuts, and measured the antioxidant content of each food. And at the tippity top was 
the Indian gooseberry, which you really <clears throat> can't find. You can in some specialty Indian markets, but amla is the powdered form, and amla boss is so super special, the way they process it, it is um, protected by eight patents. <laughs> and so it's very highly concentrated and very pure. So we love our amla boss. And the final ingredient in the smoothie bundle that's also in this um, antioxidant smoothie is ancient matcha. This is our specially sourced matcha um, tea from Japan, organic, and it has been tested against your off the shelf type of green teas and contains 10 times uh, the bioavailability and up to 149 times the EGCG potency, the epigallocatechin gallate, which is the magical uh, phytochemical that stops tumor invasion and migration and metastasis. So anyway, that is our smoothie bundle. And now, <clears throat> for your chance to win said smoothie bundle, uh, before I get to the question, remember, you only get one answer, and your first reply in the chat is your answer that we use to determine who won the giveaway. Also, if you are chosen as the winner, please uh, stick around in the Zoom chat after the Cook Live uh, to make sure that we collect your shipping address. <clears throat> okay, so now, for one smoothie power bundle, Back when I was in surgical residency, I spent a great deal of time in the trauma department and in the ERs at night, on the cardiac service, on the burn team. There were a lot of overnights, let's just put it that way. And a lot of many long weeks with very little sleep. On average though, over my five years of surgical residency, which by the way was before they enacted residency hour restrictions, how many total hours per week do you think I was on the job in the hospital, making potentially life and death decisions? My only tip for you is this. It was more than your standard 40 hour work week many of us are used to these days. So enter your best guess in the chat now and remember, only one guess. Good luck everyone, we will announce the winner shortly after we are done cooking. Now it's time for some Kali Mash. Okay, I do, I think, to my uh, handy dandy, dandy recipe, recipe guide, guide here, here. <laughs> which is, I just, I just printed, printed out, out the recipes because my computer's computer being used for the soup. I, I realized that I did not put the potatoes in my uh, butternut squash, squash soup. So I did so put I did some put potato, potato chunks, chunks in there, in there. Uh, uh, just so you know, that it wasn't on, I did it while she was talking, but yeah, there are potatoes in there as there are in the recipe. So I put them in. All right, now. And they're just, and they're they were not, not cooked ahead of time. time. They're just, just in there, in there uh, uh, while, while the squash, squash and everything, and everything else, else is simmering. simmering. All right, so, All right, so Kali, Kali mash. mash. I, ahead of time, boiled, boiled potatoes and cauliflower, cauliflower in broth, broth to add to some add flavor, flavor because, because we're, we're not going to add, add what normally what gives, gives the flavor, flavor to mashed potatoes. Butter, oil. Butter, oil, heavy cream. Yeah, yeah. So we're not doing that. So we need to get the flavor from elsewhere. So I do boil them in the in the broth. And, and they, come, they come, out, come out a little, a like a, a, a kind, kind of a kind cool, of a cool golden, golden color, color from the broth. From the broth. And, and I, I, I think I, I boiled them, them, I think it was like 15, 15 minutes, minutes, but you just but keep you checking, checking them with a fork. fork. You, you don't, don't want, want the, the potatoes, potatoes to be, to be they, they, they should, should be, be able, to able to mash, mash very, very easily, easily with a fork, fork but, but not completely not mushy and falling apart because, because that doesn't really taste really good. good. And then, and as, then we as we mentioned, I cooled, I cooled them. them. Uh, so, so now they're going to be more starch resistant, resistant and healthier, healthier and my gut bacteria is going to thank me. And I drained them very well. And well, you don't even have to drain them very well because honestly having a little broth in there is not a big deal. Uh, and, and now I put them in a bowl, bowl and I'm going to mash them. them. And I had my mash rod ahead of time. I don't know where it is. So I'm going to use pork. Uh, okay, so, okay, so where are you? I, I was mashing while you were doing some butternut squashing. So I'm okay, so mashed together with like potatoes and cauliflower. You're way ahead of me already. Okay, so I'm mashing. Using a fork, it's going to take a little longer. Uh, I've also used a, like a handheld oh, beater. beater? You know, electric, electric beater, beater to mash. mash. You, just you just have to be, to be careful, careful because, because you, you can, can over mash, mash potatoes. potatoes. Uh, Chris, you, you use, use, use the, the uh, Yukon, Yukon gold, gold right? right? I used Yukon gold. 
Okay, I, I used I Russet. Used I decided I to go Russet, Russet in the end. I don't even know what made me change my mind because I was going um, Yukon and then I went Russet. Uh, you can use either. You do have to be careful on either account, though, of over e over mashing and especially over blending if you're using a handheld, like any type of handheld blender. Uh, so. Yeah, I usually use my KitchenAid mixer because I have to quadruple this recipe. Each child oh, yeah, alone yeah. will eat this amount of potatoes. Um, I have a question for you. I make my mashed potatoes leaving the skins on and I, I peeled them because that was your recipe and I'm wondering what do you find bad about leaving the skins on because we know that's where a lot of the main nutrients that is true well, well if you use russets, russets you can, you have to take the skin off because the skin is really fibrous and it, it's like you know baked potato skin so it's sure. even if you boil it it's pretty thick uh, if you use Yukon gold you can keep the skins on sure if it's not going to be traditional mashed potatoes because there will be skin in there. If you find a really thin skin, um, Yukon Gold, you can absolutely leave the skin on for sure. Okay, so I was just wondering. If there was and yes, you are going to get more nutrition if you leave the skin on for sure. I leave the skin on when I make um, like pretty much everything else with potatoes. But for if I'm trying to make traditional mashed potatoes on Thanksgiving and trying to get people to buy in. I feel like I have better luck with my family if I take the skin off. Yeah. Um, have I done it with fingerling potatoes? I have not, but I'm sure you could. I, again, if it's thin skin and you cook them long enough, you could probably do that. Those are typically roasted. I mean, I think those are better for roasting than doing like a mashed potato. Um, yeah, so that, that would be, I think, I think you're better off just roasting some potatoes if you're going to use fingerlings versus, you know, or putting them in the air fryer versus mashing. mashing. So like, like I said, I you said, don't want to mash, mash too much mash because it can turn, turn into glue. glue. I do I think the, uh, the cauliflower helps help prevent that. that. How are yours going? going? They're beautiful. They're just, like so perfect. And I've never, uh, mi I've done cauliflower mash, but not with the potato. Like it just makes so much sense. And the boys are um, gonna be eating some delicious cruciferous vegetables. I never know it. Actually, today they might. You know what I did? I used the organic Trader Joe's frozen collie. Uh, so it's a trio color. So there's a little purple and a little green in here. <laughs> They're gonna be like, oh, that's oh, very that's funny. funny. Well, no, no. <laughs> they might know, they might after, know all. after all. <laughs> yeah. I might not be as sneaky as I thought. That's right, that's, that's funny. funny. Okay, okay so, so they're getting, getting pretty good, good here. here. And like I said, these are cold, so I'm gonna reheat them. them. When I reheat them, I'm gonna put them in a pot and I'm gonna add a little, and again, this is this is for Thanksgiving. And, and I, don't I don't usually, usually I, don't I don't really use, use butter, butter, vegan butter, butter for anything, but I do but I put do some in my mashed, mashed potatoes, potatoes or on top of them when they're done. Uh, and then I use a little bit of either soy milk or oat milk. Do not make this the mistake of putting vanilla soy milk in your potatoes. Cause I did that one year and I just didn't notice that it was vanilla and it was, they were so disgusting and it was very sad. Another thing really I like to, do just for variations, you know, when you're trying to you're mixing up potatoes, is I dump a ton of nutritional yeast in potatoes sometimes and make them like cheesy uh, mash. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I know, I know. I, I, have, I have one, one person, person in my family who loves nutritional yeast. yeast. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the majority, the, the, the other half, half of my family does family not like it. So, so. okay, um, um, all right. I'm moving on with you. Are you adding butter now? Yeah. Well, I was going to add it once I heat it, once I get it on back on the stove. So I'm going to put it back in a pan. The pot. This was the pot that I had the broth in, and there's, you know, so there's not that much left in there. I mean, there's not left because I used it. I'm going to put them back in here. And do you use the potato, potato masher because I think it works better than before, to be honest. And I'm going to start, start, we're going to start, start heating, heating them up. up. And then I'm going to go for the, the, the uh, great, 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 great. My, my favorite, favorite part. part. All right, so they're on. I'm so I'm obsessed. I can't, I love gravy so much. I can't wait to try yours because I'm always like looking it. for improvement. And whenever Andy is like, this is the best gravy you've ever made, I'm always like, oh, I didn't even pay attention to how I made it. Like, I, know. <laughs> I just was whipping it together. So I need to have a real recipe when he says it's his favorite. You're bringing up a good point, and that is, Though in, in that, a lot, a lot of, these of these things, things you you can, you, you can 
fudge the recipe a little bit, right? You can, oh, I, I want more spice than that. Or I'd like that to be a little, a little less spicy. Or I want more herbs than that. You can do that with these recipes. It's, they're not written in stone. And I think it's fun to play with them and to make sure that they are what our family's going to like. So, yeah, it's... it's it's always fun to play around with that. So, okay, so these are mashed. Mine are super mashed up, and I'm about to add my, my, my um, I'm using organic oat milk, but you can use, uh, I prefer to use soy milk. I just, the soy milk I have is flavored. by How much are you putting in? I put about, let's see, what did I put? I put a quarter cup. Okay. Um, I would just like to give a shout out. It's like a Trader Joe's commercial today for some reason. But I will tell you, this is the, uh, I'm sure there are others. This brand, the organic Trader Joe's soy milk, literally has two ingredients. The first is water, and the second one is whole organic soybeans. End of story. So, for those of you trying to avoid carrageenan and guar gum and added sugars, etc., you're welcome. Yep. Okay, so now... They're heated up, and they look really good. I'm very excited to eat them. I'm going to put them on the shoulder. shoulder. But, but at this, at this point, point, I can decide, I decide, I taste, I taste them, them, and I say, you know, they're, they're still, still a little, still a little thick, thick, so I can so add, add a little broth, broth to, them. to them. Or, or I can, can add, add a little, little more um, milk. milk. That's, That's your call. Your call. You have you to have taste them and decide. I think they need a little, they need to be a little... Um, thinned out, out, but I don't I want them to taste, taste more milky, milky, you know what I'm saying? saying? So that so then you can just decide. decide. Or you can just leave them as is. Did you do the, I'm lost, did we do the garlic and the cloves and the, uh, not cloves, sorry, chives and the so salt? The chives, sorry, the chives go on the top and I totally forgot about the garlic, but See? I roasted garlic when I roasted my veggies, when I had those uh, on the pan. So yeah, so you, yeah can you can throw that throw garlic, garlic in there, in there too. too. You, you could have thrown, thrown that in when you were um, um, mashing. mashing. Sorry, Sorry about, that. about that. Okay, so garlic, salt, and the chives go on top. So I just need to and uh, butter. Is that for the top or is that for now? That you could go either, either way. way. You could put you a. Could, a why don't you, you put, put, put a little in there? I always put a little in there, but just but just a little, and then I can put a little on the top. And the garlic you could put in. I roasted the garlic with my veggies when I roasted my veggies. I could put that in as well, but I'm I'm probably gonna not put it in at this point. So. Okay, and then uh, salt. Yum. And that's it. That's so easy on the salt. You can go a little bit at a time. I, I generally do very little and then let everybody self salt their portion. That's exactly, that's ex I always do that because you know there's no reason to salt the heck out of stuff, uh, especially when you can always add salt and you can't take it away like we always talk about. So here's my potatoes, which are going to look better, better once, once I, I... Yum. Yum. Okay. They're so good. They're going to they're be better with the... So sorry, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, the garlic and then the chives are just going to get sprinkled at the, on the top at the end. Okay. So I'm going to put a little in here to demo with everyone. Okay. Right. Let me see. The soup is coming along great. I'll show that to you when we get back to that. So I'm going to sprinkle some chives on top. It's so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Okay. There's right, mine, and I am going to... Can't wait. Can't wait. Come here, spoon. All right. Amazing. So good. Justin's going to know there's cauliflower in here, though. <laughs> Is there purple? <laughs> it's really delicious. Yum. Yay. A new mash to my recipe. Oh. We're okay. I suddenly thought meatloaf. But we have, oh, se yeah. we no, have seven minutes. I did that minutes. with the veggies because I didn't set the timer like I told you to do. Okay, so my soup is... Boiling away here, and, and the, really, the, the really the soup is going to be done. done. Like once, once the potatoes, the potatoes are, done, are done, it's kind, kind of done. done. But, but you, you can, can cook, cook it for longer. longer. I, feel I feel like if you, you do cook it for longer, for longer and kind of mix that butternut squash up and mix the herbs in there, and you can end up cooking it for like forty minutes or so. In the interest of time, I probably probably won't. I'm going to see where my potatoes are. Yeah, I mean, I cut my potatoes a little big, so they're still they're still doing their thing. But the butternut squash is now falling apart. The big chunks that I scooped in there nice. are falling apart, and it's looking pretty good. 
So, and I think I added just the amount, right amount right of broth. So, so I think we're, I think we're in, good in good shape, shape there. there. And now and I now want to talk, talk about, about the best, best and easy, easy vegan, vegan gravy. gravy. So, so I've, I've made, made this, this, I've made, I've so, made many so many different, different types of vegan gravy, gravy over the years. This, this is the kind, kind of the one that I've settled on. on. As Christy was saying, saying, like a lot of times you're kind of playing around, around you know, and how much you're putting of everything. everything. So, so, and, and with this, with this one, one there, that's, that's no exception. No this, this is how we made it this time. I might not make it this way next time. But what it has is tamari or soy sauce, broth, nutritional yeast, cornstarch, mushrooms, Unless, Unless your kids, kids or, or someone, someone in your family doesn't, family doesn't like mushrooms. So, so I took a page out of Chrissy's book, guys. I have tons of mushrooms because Andy, Ethan, and I are mushroom obsessed. Good thing because a meta-analysis came out this year, 2022. Uh, 14 different studies on shrooms. And the high versus low mushroom consumers had 35% less breast cancer. And they're awesome. So... Uh, the other two, Justin and Sebastian, are a no-go. Like, we'll leave the room if they think anything has mushrooms in it. So I mean, Chrissy made the great suggestion, just do it on the side, because if anything is a quick add, it's mushrooms to gravy. Like, it doesn't have to be cooked with the gravy. It doesn't have to be, um, especially if you love mushrooms. So I, I also have my mushrooms here. I sauteed them. I broth sauteed them earlier, and I added a little thyme, but you don't have to, uh, but you can. And then I made the gravy made last, last night, night, actually. actually. And, and the thing, the thing with, this with this gravy, gravy is, is and I'm gonna put it off Oh, you already made it? I was gonna yeah, make it. it. Oh, okay. I made it tonight because I wanted, I wanted to, have wanted to have it kind of done, done and show you. Show you. So, 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 so Christy, just, just put all, all that, that stuff, stuff together. together. And okay, be, got it. The, the, so yeah, I yeah, just I wanted to talk about this because I wanted, I wanted to show, to show you. you. In fact, I'm going to pour it in something glass, glass so you can see it. Because there's one thing about this gravy. If you're serving it to other people, that can be, <laughs> I don't want to call it off-putting, but it could be a little like, what's happening there? Is the nutritional yeast doesn't really dissolve. So you can blend it. And then the nutritional, nutritional yeast doesn't, doesn't show up. So I don't know if you can see this. It's just, there's just little flex in it. Yeah, uh, of the like nutritional yeast, yeast which, which I have, I no, have problem no problem with because I, I love nutritional yeast. yeast. But, but if, I, if I was trying to get my kids to eat it uh, and I, I blended it and then they didn't even know that was in there um, in the beginning. Now they don't care. But in the beginning, they were like, I don't want that nooch. And now they put nooch all over their popcorn and they're obsessed with it. But back in the day. And what I will do with this, because I made it ahead of time, is I'm, I could, I think in your in case, case, Christy, you're, you're going to heat it up, up and then you're yep, going, going to... to uh, uh, Put the mushrooms, put the mushrooms in. in. You can put, you can it, put on it on top. You can put it on your, you know, put, you know, put the, the gravy, gravy on in a separate pot. pot throw, the throw the mushrooms in. in. But, but if I, if I did make, make the gravy ahead of time, time I, like I like to then put, put the mushrooms in because, in because I think they flavor the gravy. Because you've already kind of caramelized them a little and release some yummy flavor. And so you do that first, and then I put them in here in the pot, and then I'm going to now heat it up and for a little bit. And so, so it's hot, hot. And, and also so I would probably heat it up maybe for another like 10 or 15 minutes to get that mushroom taste into there. And you can also use, you can also add onions. I'm like throwing something completely in the mix. I don't love it with onions. I feel like the onions, like you're kind of chewing on onions. So I don't know. I, I love onions. I, and there's a lot of onion in the soup, but I just yeah, don't, I, just, I, don't, I don't, love don't love it as it much. much. I've made, like I said, I've made it a lot of, a lot of Many many, many, many times. times. And so I've started, started making it without onions, onions because I think that it detracts, it detracts from, it. from it. I suppose, I suppose if you did blend it and it had the onions in it, you'd be fine, fine because they wouldn't be uh, uh, crunchy. Oh, see, Chrissy, uh, I've got everything in here except for the okay. cornstarch. Everything except for the cornstarch. Yes, don't put the cornstarch in. You could, yeah, actually you could put the cornstarch in, but make a slurry with the cornstarch. So take a couple tablespoons of cornstarch, put in a little liquid and just whip it up so it's a so it's just like a cr cloudy liquid and then pour it in there. Okay. Hey, Sheena That's Joshi. Uh, yes, these are caraway pans, my pink cutie caraway pans. How did you know that? Yes, Michelle, you can use arrowroot, absolutely. Totally no problem. Okay, I'm gonna make my slurry. I had arrowroot. I went and bought cornstarch just for you, my friend. I don't know why I don't have any. I don't oh, ever use it. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can kind of always. You can always you add stuff. But I was like, I, I should have some. Why? I may need it. 
I take said. it back. You know what? Root, root, root. If you if, you, if, if you're, you're just, just gonna, gonna eat the gravy, gravy at that, that moment, moment yes, yes. But, but if you, you try, try to reheat arrowroot, arrow arrow I don't think, I don't it, think works it works as well as cornstarch, corn corn which is why I went to using cornstarch. So that was for a reason that I didn't say arrowroot or cornstarch. So there you go. Doesn't heat up. Doesn't reheat as well. Okay, so I'm going to make a little slurry with cornstarch and just a wee bit of water in there so that it doesn't clump up and then not thicken the gravy as it should. And then, uh, so my meatloaf is going to be at the 35 minute mark in less than one minute. I have here a third cup of ketchup to which I'm gonna add a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and we're gonna paint that across the top of the meatloaf. Um, guess what I did? I didn't cover the meatloaf what? with tin foil. Uh-oh, did you look at it yet? <laughs> no. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We'll go look at it. <laughs> Might be okay. okay. Oh. Thank goodness my earpiece didn't go in the oven. Oh yeah, it looks beautiful, totally fine. Someone made that up that you gotta cover it with tin foil, it looks great. All right, so now I'm gonna add the Worcestershire to my third cup of ketchup. I think it depends on the pan because you have like After a I put my ear pan. back in. And then we're gonna paint that across the top and put it back in the oven for 10 more minutes. Um, what am I gonna do that with? Let's use this thing. Okay, Worcester, where are you? So I'm gonna go back to my recipe, make sure I do it right. I love how you say Worcestershire different every single time you say it. Every time, because I don't know how to say it. <laughs> don't ask That's me to say it again, I'm not even sure I said it right. <laughs> Does anyone really know how to say it? Can you spell it out phonetically for us? <laughs> Oh, Tanaz, what an awesome question. For someone who has ERP or positive breast cancer, what is the one food that I think you should eat every single day? Well, there are three, and they all take the first place. Soy, in any of its minimally processed or whole food forms, so soybeans, edamame, tofu, soy milk, tamari, um, or tempeh, number one. Number two, flax seeds. Two tablespoons of ground flax seeds every single day. Number three, at least a half a cup of raw or lightly steamed broccoli or broccoli sprouts every single day. Glad you asked. What's that? Now I'm just gonna spread this over the top. But I am also, I was desperate to make the gravy <laughs> because I wanted it on the mashed potatoes, but also I love my meatloaf with gravy. So sometimes I don't do this uh, sweeter ketchup Ketchup topping, but. No, because if you're doing the gravy, you probably don't need that. But at the same time, it just blends and disappears, basically. Okay, I'm gonna put this back in and hope that. Yes, timer. I know. Okay. Okay. So this is gonna go in for 10 minutes. I'm gonna reset the timer so I don't do something terrible to this again. Okay, and I'm going back to my, I'm paying attention now to my soup, which I've neglected, which is okay. You can neglect the soup a little bit. But my squash is completely falling apart now. My potatoes are soft. And I'm over here working on my gravy. I'm going to put in my cornstarch. I'm going to slosh around my shrooms that I just put way too much broth in. <laughs> but that's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah. I, probably, I might have to talk you through what to do with this soup versus actually doing it because it's very hot. You can use a handheld immersion blender or you can use um, a blender. But we usually suggest using a blender after, after it cools off a little, little bit, bit because, because it's hot. It's hot. Uh, um, and and I, I, at the, the point where, where I'm, using I'm using the blender, the blender is, when is when I start, I start adding, adding the, the, the milk. milk, just a little bit at a time. Uh, so the plant milk. I, I, I usually put a little in the pot, but then I decide at the blender how much more I want to put and how creamy I want it. Because when you look at it, you'll say, oh my gosh, it's just not, it's 
it's not going to be thick enough, enough or, or it's not going to be creamy, creamy enough. And then, and then once, once it starts, it starts blending, blending, you really get a, get a sense, sense of where it is. Where it is. So, so often, often I'll blend, I'll blend the, whole the whole soup up, up then, then I'll bring, I'll it, bring back it back to the stove and then I'll add a little bit of uh, milk at a time. So you could do that too. That's probably your best bet. I, that's, hopefully that's what I said in the directions because that's what I usually do. Let's see what I said. Do, do, do. On the on soup, soup squash, 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 squash. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so I said so to I add, said the, add a half, half a cup of soy, soy or oat milk and, and use a handheld immersion hand blender, blender uh, or, or wait, wait until the soup until comes, comes uh, cools, uh, cools off and then use a blender. And you can and totally you can do that, that 100%, 100%, 100%. No problem, no problem doing, doing that. that. Um, um, all right, so. so see. I'm going to scoop a little in the blender just so you can see what it looks like at this point. Oh, before I do that, I'll show you what the topping to the butternut squash soup is. I roasted some pumpkin seeds on a dry pan, and then they start popping, um, and they turn a little golden color. And then you can just put a tiny bit of soy sauce or tamari on them. This gives them a little more flavor. Do not put the soy sauce or the tamari on while they're in the pan because it will burn on the pan, and they will just it'll just taste burnt. You have to take them out while they're really hot. You just spritz them a little bit with tamari. And the tamari sticks, sticks to them, to them. And, and it dries right away, away. and it's really, it's good. really good. And you just put them in a totally dry pan, right? Put it in a dry pan. All nuts are always mm -hmm. toasted on a dry pan because nuts have a good fat content. So you don't ever need to spray the pan with anything. And then my go-to, I always do the same, same thing. thing. I'm like kind of a one-trick pony, pony with this because, because it's, it's so, so good. good. I, I always eat them up until they're, you know, the desired brown, you know, roasted that, that I, want. I want and then, and then I, put I put them on a plate and then I spray, spray them with tamari. tamari kind of the, so what I do what I do every time because it's all good cashews taste great that way uh pine nut, no not pine nuts pine nuts you know it's spray, but cashews um walnuts almonds toasted almonds you toast them all the same way on the pan but pumpkin seeds taste especially good with tamari on them and, and make extra because, because you're just gonna, gonna want to eat, eat them and then you'll have and, them as demonstrated by Chrissy right now I'm like is she gonna put any of those on the soup or is she just gonna eat and talk I'm kidding I'm sure you're gonna save some for the fam Catherine is turmeric okay for those on aromatase inhibitors I've been told by a doctor and a pharmacist that it can reduce the effectiveness of AI's aromatase inhibitors uh, but then I read that that's only the case with turmeric supplements final word is it's only the case with supplements, like a super physiologic dose of turmeric and curcumin is going to potentially interfere with CYP2D6, which is in your liver, which is going to convert, um, actually it's a tamoxifen thing that I'm talking about right now. It, it, it inhibits the conversion of tamoxifen to its activated form. Um, with AIs, I'm not sure what it interferes with, but if that is also true of AIs, it's never from a dietary dose. If you're going to put a teaspoon of um, turmeric into a dish you're making or, or my antioxidant smoothie feel free that is never going to interfere with the drug heating nuts doesn't damage the fats question from michelle to everyone this is something chrissy might know more of i do think that roasted nuts uh create uh ages um glycolic enzymes right, that actually lead to inflammation and aging. Um, do you remember that, the AGEs that are produced in heated nuts, roasted nuts? Is that, is is that, that, is that all nuts or just peanuts? Just peanuts? We will get back to you next time on that. I think it's all nuts. Technically, I'm talking about seeds, pumpkin seeds, which are, which are always, always roasted because you wouldn't you eat them, eat not, them roasted. not roasted. So, so I, 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 think I think seeds are, di are different. But yeah, as far as cashews, roasted cashews, roasted peanuts, I, yeah, we will have to get back to you on that. I, I thought that was just the case with peanuts, but I could be wrong. No, I think it's also true of like chestnuts. I think it's all roasted nuts, unfortunately. So you have to just, you know, limit your consumption. Yeah. Like most things. Yeah. My gravy's not thickening enough. Should I add more? Yeah, of course, yeah, I add more. Add more um, um, yeah, definitely, definitely add more. Add more. Okay. Right, I want to show you this soup because it came out really good. Tasting it. Yum. Okay, okay. I, I what happens with this is I blend it. And this and isn't this really, is really bowl ready, ready because, because what I'd have to do is I just took some out because I wanted to show you. I blend it, 
and then I'll and then top, I'll top it, it with some with pumpkin, pumpkin seeds. seeds. However, However I, I realized, realized after, after I tasted, tasted it, it that I would, I would want, want to add, to add a little more cinnamon. More cinnamon. So, so all, all of my blended, blended soup goes back in the pot, pot. And, then and then I might I add a little more milk, milk maybe a little more broth, broth and maybe and a little more cinnamon. More cinnamon. This is really good though. I would eat it just like this, but I think it can use a little more cinnamon. So I would add more. So I did run over there and blend it while we were talking about all that. Okay. So my veggies, I'm going to plate them. We've got three minutes until my meatloaf is done. It needs to sit for 15 minutes though. So it doesn't get, fall apart when cut. Okay. Well, so we're I'm not going to wait for that, veggies. but I will do the, just show you how it looks all cooked. Yeah. And then we do have our big giveaway smoothie bundle, aloe tonic, omelette boss, ancient matcha. I wonder who, I wonder who, I actually saw who as it went by. I was like, oh, that's spot on. Okay, so the other thing about roasted veggies, veggies is what I like to do is put them back in the oven. oven. So I'm so going to throw this is oven safe. safe. So I'm going to put, this is my serving platter and it's, they're not done because you're going to have some um, other things added, but I'm going to throw them back in the oven for a couple of minutes to heat them up. For anyone? And my oven is off. Not still heated to 400. I don't think I'd want to put that plate in there at 400 degrees, but it's. So it's going to heat them up, but up for the interest of time, I'll probably pull them out in a minute. All right. So it's time for the big giveaway Woo. for one sm smoothie power smoothie bundle. How many hours a week did I work on average week after week, year after year for five years of surgical residency? And the answer is 108, making oh. the winner my peep, my boy. We're waiting on the winner. <laughs> well, Shelby was very close with 105. And someone else had 112. But I, can you scroll? I'm ha we're just scrolling to make sure we don't say the wrong person, but it's looking like Shelby. So I was on call every third night on average, which is a crazy thing. If you've ever seen my online summit, I tell a wild story about how tired I got one day. <laughs> Very wild. Um, so you would go to work, you'd usually arrive about 5 a.m., do your rounds. At 6.30 we had class, and then at 7 we went to the OR and operated all day. You always operated. You might get called out if there was like an issue on the floor, if you had the ER uh, pager. I had three pagers on my belt, no cell phone, no such thing. Um, so one was for my team, one was for the ER, and one was for uh, the ICU. And then uh, you would work all day, and if you were on call, you just kept staying up and working. And then when the morning came, you'd round at 5 if you weren't in the ER taking the calls. And then you'd go to the class at 6.30, and then you'd go to the OR at 7, and then you would operate and work all day and get home around 6 or 7 at night. Crash like nobody's business. Wake up the next morning at 4.35 to get there to round, and you have just a normal easy day that ends at six or seven, crash because you're not quite recovered, wake up and then do that again, like the whole thing I just described. So that day is where you get up at round at five and you're up all night to wake up, never wake up because you didn't go to sleep. You're in the morning and you work that whole day and it just never ends year after year after year. I got really tired one day. Ask me another time. It's a funny story, but this is a very long Zoom. Which, by the way, IG, I think you're gone. It's probably been an hour and you're, you've left me. I'm sorry. IG does that, just you talk too long. All right, my alarm's going off.
give my gravy a stir. Oh, it's finally thickening. I needed to do an extra tablespoon of that cornstarch. Okay, perfect. But that looks yeah, good that, now. That, and then I don't know why I was so ambitious with the, I'm like boiling my, my mushrooms over here. Okay. Okay, I want to show you my platter. This is, is, is my, my roasted, roasted veggie, veggie platter, platter with, with a drizzle, drizzle of balsamic, balsamic vinegar. vinegar. Thick, you know, you know, reduced reduce balsamic, balsamic, not, not balsamic, balsamic vinegar. vinegar. Uh, okay. And uh, let's see, pomegranate seeds, which are very, very cancer fighting and also very delicious. All right. And, and it looks very pretty. That and then is I'll pretty. also show you, since I have it right here, my mashed potatoes with my mushroom gravy. A little bowl here. Wait, hold on, go. Chrissy. I gotta announce today's winner for November eighth is Shelby Highland. Congratulations, Shelby, with the answer of one hundred and five. The real answer being one hundred and eight. Some weeks, one hundred and thirty-two was the longest week I ever worked. Which I, there's only like one hundred sixty-four hours in a week. So do that math. All right, I'm just gonna pull this little puppy out, and then I'd put it on a very pretty plate. Ooh. Are we getting this? Oh, so yummy. Can't wait for dinner. But I wait till it cools for about 15 minutes and then I would just get a big spatula and transfer it onto a decorative plate. And then the final touch is to sprinkly, sprinkle. You could do some, I'm just doing some fresh parsley, but you could do some fresh chives, green onion across the top. And serve with all of Chrissy's sides. Show us your sides again. We were frozen on um, me waiting to announce the winner, I think, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Show I'll show you again. again. It's a little hot. hot. Okay, okay, here we go. Oh. Here are the veggies. So, and you see, and you the, see different the different, different colors, colors, the parsnips, the parsnips and the and carrots, and carrots and Brussels, and, Brussels, and then and you have the pomegranate, pomegranate seeds, seeds and, and a balsamic, balsamic reduction drizzle, drizzle which, which you can buy, buy anywhere pretty much. And then I, I had, had the soup, soup which, which I already, already showed. showed, and then and the, the mashed, mashed potatoes, potatoes with, with the, uh, the gravy, the which gravy I just poured all over my computer. computer. Okay. Okay. There we go. There we go. Oh, I hope you didn't for real. I, I did a little. It's all right. Chrissy, I am very grateful for your friendship. I'm very grateful for you for your friendship as well. And to everyone out there, I'm very grateful that you joined us today and that you're continuing on your cancer kicking journey and allowing us to be a small part of it. I hope that you have a blessed, warm, welcoming, family oriented Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving and that uh, you stay safe. And I am going to just remind you all that we have our next Cook Live December 8th, right? We said 8th. I think it's eight, Tuesday yeah. the 8th, and it's called I'm Dreaming of a White Lasagna. It is my dreamy lasagna. It is so amazing with one of Chrissy's outrageous side salads. This is a Christmas feast. This lasagna is like none other, and uh, you will not be disappointed if you join us. So I'm, again, so grateful for all of you, and um, don't forget... Sherry uh, Highland, I remember, what's the full name? You know who you are? Don't leave me. We got to get your information so that we can ship the smoothie bundle. And uh, then we'll contact you. So leave that chat window open. All right, guys, we are so excited. Thank you for all the comments, Is the it, lovely comments. It, it's really nice. We appreciate, we appreciate it, so, it much. so much. Yeah, we love to bringing you in. So for everybody watching this who doesn't know, you have to be on Zoom to be brought into the room with us. And we love conversing with you through your questions. It, m it might actually um, be December 6th. So <laughs> whatever's Tuesday. Can Let me look. Hold on. I have a Let's get this right. I don't want you guys to. You can always go to the website. Whatever's oh, on the it website. Is the it's the 6th. December 6th. So don't miss it. And to RSVP, do that right now. Go to the description below and click the link or go to pinklotus.com slash kitchen. All right, everyone. God bless. Happy Thanksgiving. Eat plants, not birds. Mwah.